Hello and welcome. I'm very pleased you could be with us tonight. I have a very special guest. I'm talking with Judith Meisel. She is a Holocaust survivor. She is here now in Minnesota, and she's telling her story not only in Minnesota, but around the country, um, some around the world. History exists, a quote goes, only if people tell it. And you, Judy, are telling your story as a way to let people know um, what happened to you, what happened to the Jewish people. Are you finding that as you tell your story, you are feeling sad all over again and fearful all over again? Or is it cathartic? How do you experience the telling of your story? To tell the story, it's not a story, it's happening, and it's still happening. Mm -hmm. And to me, this is the most important thing is, is that we need to care for one another. Judaism, I'll tell you all the isms. Antisemitism, and what happened? to African Americans here in the United States. We had that too in the beginning for a long time. It finally quilled down, but it's still, I feel, placed under the rug. We still have racism. The racism, all the ism, we have to get rid of it. I think we'll go back to 1941. There was very heavy anti-Semitism all over. When your father died, then your mother moved you and your sister and brother to the, the big city, right? Yes, Kaunas, yes. Uh -huh. and, and that's then where you were when the Nazis came, and then they swept you all up into a ghetto, correct? Yes, but before that, I don't know if I have time to tell that. Uh, I lived under Stalin, and they had uh, all the children they would send away, and, and that's uh, to, to send away to, uh, to camp in the summer. And I was sent away there. And uh, then uh, all of a sudden, when I was in school, I had to, to a uh, teacher would always, would never think that we were Jewish because to them there was no such thing as Jews or Christians or that. And you didn't understand. look Jewish as a no. young girl, did you? No, and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. We didn't know Russian. And my mother knew Russian and uh, things like that. And it became so difficult, you know, with them that they didn't know, uh, you know, uh, what we, uh, to do with the teachers, but they would, every day, they would say, can you tell me, are there anything going on that they talk about religion? Mm -hmm. and that was talk, a red flag, yeah, wasn't it? talk about religion mm -hmm. and anything also, if, if, if there is anyone they didn't say Jews. If there's anyone in your home, light candles. So your mother was worried, wasn't she, yes. when she heard that? Yes, yes. They sent us there. But when we were there, we were all together. There weren't too many Jewish kids. They put us together with non-Jews, and we were there. And we were only there about four days when they, um, when they said, um, you have to separate. Whoever is Jewish has to be separate mm -hmm. after four days. Mm -hmm. the Jew but I had no idea who came in. If Germany came in, I was only 11 years right. old. I you was not know. quite 11. The next day, on the fifth day, there came a knock on the door and said, it said, Judas, that's what they called me, Judas, you, you come out. And the man was there with uh, his, uh, uh, to take me to my mother. 
and he showed me a letter from her that she gave him her Danish diamond ring to bring me home. Mm. And he put me in, in sacks of potatoes and everything. I was little. And he said, don't you move a thing because we're going to go through and they'll stop us. So you were and, hidden. And he was talking about German. I didn't even know what, what mm. that meant. Mm. And uh, sure enough, one time they went through and we were going through. And then finally, they brought them to my mother. And my mother got so, she was crying because they took all the Jewish kids. Mm -hmm. She knew there and was. And killed them. Oh, and killed and them. And shot them. Oh, so you escaped just barely, didn't you? Yeah. We're going to show a clip from a movie that's been made about Judy's life called Tak for Alt, which means oh, you have for it. everything. Oh, you have it. We'll show just a little clip now about their trip, their horrible trip, to the Stutthof concentration camp in Poland. And then I'll be back and get her reaction. One afternoon in June in 1944, we were notified that we have to assemble at the big field in the ghetto. We stood all day and oh, it was raining and cold. We were taken into trucks, my mother, my sister, my brother, and me. And we drove for maybe two days. In the middle of the night, we were taken off, put into train, and we were taken to Stuttgart. When we got to Stutthof, the men got off, and they separate them from us. And I remember my mother. She was so panicked when they took my brother. And that was the last time we saw my brother. So they took us in, in um, trucks and then put us on the... Uh, and a train, and it was like we couldn't even move. Mm. Nothing in mm. there. I mean, there was no food, and now we, we drove quite a long time. I can tell you how long. And when we came down, we were in Stutthof, and all I can remember, nighttime, very dark, and he kept saying, schnell, schnell, schnell. Which uh, means? It's fast, fast, oh, fast. Hurry, in German. hurry. Yeah. And then, then pushing us out and throwing us out. By the time they throwed out, half of the people were dead. Mm. They, so picked they, up, they picked up, them, they threw them out, and then they picked up, I, I was seeing it. Mm. And was your brother Abe at this point he was taken, separated from we, you? No, they were taken. They were taken right from Auschwitz. Oh, it was they were there. Taken. They where were, the boys went one way and the men? No, they were, no, no, they, I'm sorry, to, uh, to Stutthof. They came and we got off and he was, my mother was so, was crying, she was so cold. Oh, of and course. he went, to, they sent him to Dachau. Mm -hmm. And you did not think you would ever see him again? Well, I saw it. I, know. I mean, he, he, he survived, did, but he died. At that point, he died two years ago. Right. Yeah. I can't imagine how your mother felt at oh. that point. Was my mother? I was thinking of my mother. But, you know, she died in the, the gas chamber. Mm -hmm. I was standing around there and clapping and laughing and undress all the women. 
My mother was a religious woman, for her to dress naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Horrible. It was horrible how they even, you know, went on and on and on. Could we talk a little bit about life at Stutthof? It, it was very hard. I mean, I remember reading they, they yeah. took your mother's gold yeah. teeth out of her, yeah. fillings out of her mouth. They tore out my hair. They tore out your hair. Um, and the two of them, I remember, because I knew a little bit of German, and they said that for the pupa, my my mm. daughter would like that and throw out my a lock of my. They used to call me Shirley Temple because I had long mm, curly hair, mm. and uh, they, you know, at home, and they tore out whatever nut, and I have holes. To this day, I still have some holes in Do my you? head. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Um. Well, there are so many threads to this story. Judy, when you were at Stutthof, I still want to find out more. There was not much to eat, was there? You did not get fed. Uh, a bread, a little bread of this size, and it would, would uh, no more than this. And we would have to tear it apart. They wouldn't give us the whole one. They would give us a part of that mm. for 10 people. For and 10 somebody people. who would get that, that uh, um, p bread, uh -huh. it was a little bread. Made Just out, like we this used big? to say it was made out of salt work. Oh, you know, it was so really awful. But we were hungry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes a person would get it. They would pick 10 people. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you that uh, uh, in situations like this, you see the good in people and the mm -hmm. terrible people, and they would run away, and we would get nothing. Oh, so, so they were desperate, and they yeah. held on to it for themselves. In, uh, my place was, was about 1,800 in my place, oh, there were. my my side. And as they would die off, then they would bring other people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the first one. We're talking about Stutthof some more yeah, at Stutthof. this point. Yes, Stutthof. Um, so yeah. you ate grass even at some point, correct? Yeah. To, to fill your yeah. tummy? Yeah. yeah. Well, my sister was in, in a, um, they had a small place, a little, a place where they would, if you had typhus, they would take you if you can get in there and take there. Uh, but then the doctor would come around and give you a shot and throw you out. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw this, my sister, I went in the middle of the night in the dark, went crawling on my knees. Mm -hmm. And then I went, I said, well, you need to get out with me. You, you have to go, I'll help you get back and be called back to our barrack. And she would be so weak she with was ty weak. typhoid fever. And I, when I went, I kept saying to her, we're going to live, we're going to live, we're going to live. That's all I had in my heart to say to her, good. So something in you was very strong, wasn't it, to keep, keep such faith? Resilience. Resilience is the word, isn't it? Yeah, you were so resilient, Judy. Um, and you're and one of the last everybody survivors. Everybody wants to live, and everybody was resilient. Well, to the best of their ability, right? Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. One of the stories that broke my heart was the story of your friend who was in the barracks with you, who kept her fist tight, and you said to her, why are you keeping your yeah. fist so tight? She was in my my room, my uh, place, and she was right there. She was very, very sweet, and she would say, I would say to her, what do you have in your fist? Do you have any bread? You know, because mm -hmm. we were so hungry. And she, she, no, she didn't. She, she went outside, and she couldn't, they weren't allowed to go outside. But I found her one time, she was just 
I thought she was done. She died. I didn't even want, you know, when I was thinking of all those things this past month, it came into me, my, my, my head. And, and, uh, and I, uh, when they asked her, uh, what's underneath you when, when she came in? And she didn't answer. And then the ba when she got undressed, like we all had to, the baby fell out. The baby was just maybe not even a week old. So she was protecting the baby yes. from their eyes. Yes. And they he took the baby with a little hand. The head was no bigger than this, and just threw it on the asphalt, and it died. Mm -hmm. And I could, to this day, in the documentary, they have that because she let out a scream. You can still hear that yes. scream, I bet, yes. yes. And in her fist, she was holding, tell the audience what she was she holding. She kept the little shoe. Yes. And my daughter, who paints, she's a painter. Right. She painted that, and it's in that take, too. And I, I, I have to tell you, and I've always thought about it, what did the little baby do? What do you conclude when you ask that huge question? I have asked this to Germans. I've spoken to Germans when they come, like, uh, uh, you know, they come to colleges to speak, and I have talked to them. They don't have it. I asked the ones that came to, from the, uh, that I, I brought that up to them, mm -hmm. that came from Germany to interview me. They have nothing to say. It was just something that I keep saying it, it's, he talked them Hitler and then memorized them and did all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But but Isil does today, they did it worse, and they were able to do this. Mm -hmm. And they thought that they were doing. Why? Because he talked to them mm -hmm. that we are not human beings. What do you do with bugs, that we are a bug? We are that, and it's not, we have to get rid of it, just like you get rid of the bugs and you let that. And that's what happened, and, and, and that's what happened. And it's unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and yet it's going on today, too. And that is what is hard to that understand. Is very scary for me. I'm sure. And for me today to think about it, which I'm always asked, this is something that I've gotten it at many universities and also high schools where they ask me, can this happen in the United States? And I told them, I love the United States. And to me, there's nothing like this country. It is so wonderful. And I love this country. When I see the flag, I cry mm -hmm. out of happiness that I came here, that I was allowed to come here. But on the other hand, it's scary that we can allow it to do, that to happen, that kind of things. It's very scary. And it's happening in Syria. It's, it's happening, happening in Rwanda. It's happening all uh, over. All over the yes. world. Um, I want to go back to when you lost your mother and she was murdered. Um, and we have a clip again that I think We'll, we'll show you what, what Judy went through. So let's look at that clip, and then I will ask you more about it. So let's roll that clip. And my mother and I were standing together, and she was taken. He didn't take me. I started screaming, Nein, ich, ich will gehen mit dich. I want to go with you. And... Uh, she didn't know where she was going. She may have gone to work, she didn't know. So she took my hand and we went in to the gas chamber. 
there was a small room and we were told to get undressed. And we went over, there's a little, like a little step. And uh, I was on the outside. She was already past the step. And he was standing there, a chubby guy drinking beer, sort of red poked face. And he said, you Schweinhunde, meaning you pig, harouse. And uh, I was holding my mother's hand. And he hit me, and my mother pushed me and said, Life, you did life, life. And that was the last I saw my mother. So I went out naked, and there was like bushes near there where all the corpses were. There was about five women taken off the dresses. And they said, come here, come here. And they immediately surrounded me and put on a dress and say, Leif zurück zu deinem Barak, run to your um, barrack. And which I did. And uh, I, uh, I don't remember what happened afterwards. I was just in such shock. I went to see my sister, and I said to her, you have to come out. We don't have a mother now. You then had that very hard march. We had to walk. We didn't take by any kind of vehicles. Right. And we had to, we were told that they, they end. And, uh, and it was that my brother was also, they liquidated his concentration the camp. Taco. And then they, they also, you know, I, he told me there was the same thing. And you and Rachel, though, weren't there bombs at some point and there was chaos, I heard, and you, you hid and then you got to a farm? Yeah. And you were taken yeah. in by the yeah. farmer and his oh, wife? Oh, that's an old story. That's an old story by itself. It's another chapter, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So many chapters. You eventually got to Denmark. I, when I got to Denmark, well, we, we escaped. We didn't have any idea of escape. We just went straight across, and then the, uh, we were falling because we had the uh, Dutch have it, you know, those mm, the uh, clogs. Yeah, and we had wooden ones. Right. And my sister had two rights, and I right. had a left and a right. Right. And she always used to say, "Don't complain. You <laughs> have to." You know, this yeah. kind of thing. And she reminded you and of that couldn't all change your life, it. right? We couldn't change it because it was all the number was in there. Oh, no so, option. Yeah. Um, in Denmark, you were taken in by a, a wonderful couple, it sounds like. Uh, yes, who but nursed you know, you they back. also, the, the boat was destroyed yes. that we bought. And that's another... Yeah. Tremendously scary yeah. story. And Torpedoed, I, I, to right? this day, I don't swim. And so you were in the water a long time? Very, very cold. Hanging on to something, right? It was winter. Oh, that's yeah. right. What were you hanging on to in the water? There was a piece of uh, part of the, uh, wa of the boat that we oh, thought okay. that. Oh, okay. But then, we, then a Danish uh, uh, group came in with some Germans, and they picked us up up there. And I have to this day, the, um, it was on so many expeditions showing the, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I can't think. To cover yourself up, they gave me that. Oh. I came because I was naked. Like a blanket. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they was there. I, I had that, that. And you weighed about what did you tell 47 me? 47 pounds. 47 pounds only. And you're not a, a short girl or a woman, so you were uh, Well, I, I shrunk a little bit here. Well, <laughs> sure, a little bit. You must have been just all ribs and, and yeah. bones. And just because of time, we need to shift 
to some of the wonderful things you got involved with here when you eventually came to Toronto and then back to Philadelphia, or down to Philadelphia, out to California eventually. But you got involved with Martin Luther King's movement. Um, you got to meet him and you got involved with the Baker family. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we need to take a break. We're going to plug your website that your grandson Ben has yeah. um, put together and then we'll come back. For those of you who would like to learn more about Judy Meisel, and I'm sure almost all of you would, there's a wonderful website that her grandson has developed and you can go to that and learn more about her life, about experiences, um, places she's speaking, about the film that we've alluded to, Talk for Alt, that is the story of her life at Stutthof and her life after that. So please take note of that, www.judymeisel.com. Well, I have a few more questions for you. Um, when people get upset about genocide and the Holocaust, they often say, but what can I do? I am just one person. And what do you say when you hear that response? All the things that get done in the world is one person. And that person gets other people to be. And to me, this is something that is all over the place. We just have to find each other and we can do that. Well, thank you so much oh, for coming welcome. down. There are oh, so many welcome. more questions I have, yeah. but I think that um, people will go to the website and learn more. And yeah. well, I appreciate so, your speaking uh, out and yeah. somehow throughout all of your very hard, hard days, yeah. you kept a sense of hope that I think is Well, one thing amazing. I learned, Hope cannot be taken away. I've been talking with Judith Meisel, who, as you've heard, if you've been able to watch this show in its entirety, is a Holocaust survivor, a civil rights activist. She's worked with gangs in New York, in a, not New York, but LA. And I'm very privileged to have had the chance to be with her. Have a good week and thank you for joining us.